I want to let people know in order to make this Canopus ADVC 110 work with the new Mac or Apple products in general, you do need to buy some hardware. This is basically a Thunderbolt 2 port connector on this end. On the other end, it's FireWire 800. You can then get an adapter to go from FireWire 800 to FireWire 400. It's the FireWire 400 port that the FireWire cable will connect into. Now, some of you might be thinking, since this is FireWire 800, do you need this FireWire 400 to 800 adapter? You don't need it. You could just get a cable that goes from FireWire 400 to FireWire 800. That would work as well. I just wanted to see if these adapters would still supply power to the Canopus ADVC 110. It did work out. So I was just kind of curious. That's why I went this route. But you don't really need the adapter. You could just get the cable itself. When everything is said and done, all the adapters and cables should connect just like this. This Thunderbolt 2 adapter to FireWire 800 will obviously plug into the Thunderbolt 2 port on my Mac Mini. If you have a Thunderbolt 3 port on your laptop or your Mac Mini, you would just have to purchase an additional Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. For this particular video, we're good to go with the way things are set up right now. Also, we need to take the RCA cables from the VHS deck and plug them into the input of the ADVC 110. For this particular demo, I'm going to take the RCA out of the Canopus ADVC 110 and plug it into this broadcast compliant monitor. This will allow us to see what we're capturing on this big, you know, broadcast compliant monitor as opposed to looking at the little graphic user interface of Final Cut Pro 10 or iMovie. You don't need to connect a broadcast compliant monitor up to the Canopus ADVC 110 to capture the video. I'm just going to do it for the purpose of this demonstration. I am now going to capture the VHS tape using Final Cut Pro 10. Before I try and capture, I want to make sure that the VHS player is powered on. I also want to make sure that the ADVC 110 is set to analog in. Once I set it to analog in, I can hit play on the VCR player and you're going to see the tape is outputting to my broadcast compliant monitor. That's exactly what I want. In order to capture using Final Cut Pro 10, I want to go over to this arrow icon or this arrow button and double click it. Mine is set for the Macintosh hard drive. Yours might be set to an external hard drive. But if you go up to cameras, you see the Canopus ADVC 110. All FireWire based DV converters will show up as a mini DV camcorder. It makes it kind of convenient. At this point in time, if I want to capture a video, all I simply do is select import. I only need about five or 10 seconds. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'll select stop import. If I slide this out of the way, we can see that it did capture that video clip right there. I'm going to capture another video clip real quick by selecting import. As I stated, there's no real need to let this go for, you know, two or three minutes because it's just for demonstration purposes. So I'll select stop import again. And now we see another video clip popped up. I can click out of this part of the graphic user interface. I can drop and drag these clips onto the timeline easy enough. And that's really all there is to capturing VHS tapes using Final Cut Pro 10, provided you have the correct hardware and provided it's set up correctly.